Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In this instructional video, we're going to show you how to wire up your Work B1510. It's going to be all inclusive. We're going to show you how to wire up your LED light ring, your micro limit switches. Everything's going to be configured into drag chain, so it's going to be nice and aesthetically pleasing. And of course, everything's going to be wired back to the black box motion control system, which is a powerhouse amongst controllers in its class. So super excited to get started on this. We're also going to be going over the software. So everything's going to be configured into your controller and you'll be running G-code at the end of this video. So stay tuned, make sure to follow along with the steps and let's get started. Okay, so for this first step, we're going to go ahead and gather these parts. What we have here is four sets of our four conductor wire. We have three at 13 feet and one at seven feet. So that's all we need to gather for this step in particular. And what we're going to be doing is attaching each one of these wires to the designated motor. So we have two motors on each side of this machine since it is a belt driven work B 1510. We also have a motor on top of our Z axis as well as a motor on the back of our X carriage which is on the back side of our Z axis. So let's go ahead and get started. First I'm going to start with one of my 13 foot four conductor wires. I'm going to move over here to my left side. Okay, so let's go ahead and loosen these pins on our connector. Okay, so make sure all those pins are at the bottom of the connector, looks good. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and orient these wires in the way that they're gonna be connected. We're just corresponding the colors here to our motor coil pairs. So red, blue, green, and yellow, working our way from right to left. And then let's tighten down each one of these pins. All right, double check those colors. Red, blue, green, and yellow. Red, blue, green, and yellow. That's perfect. So let's go ahead and put this wire to the back. Okay, so now that we have one motor down, what we're gonna do is move on to our next motor, which is gonna also receive our 13 foot four conductor wire. And that will be the top motor here of our Z axis. So let's go ahead and turn our attention there. Okay, so following the same pattern that we did for the last motor, once again, we're going to be following these colors here that we see, red, blue, green, and yellow. So we're going to loosen our pin connectors on this uh, female connector. All right, just make sure that each one of those pins is resting at the bottom of this connector. And that looks great. So let's go ahead and grab our 13 foot wire. So once again, all we're doing is matching up the colors that you see here that are coming off the motor. And we're gonna just make sure that each wire and color corresponds. So working our way from right to left here, I've got red, blue, green, and yellow. I'm gonna insert these into my connector. And once they're inserted, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten down these pin connectors. All right, and just give those a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted and connected. And once again, we're gonna reference back to our motor. Looks good, we have red, blue, green, and yellow. That's precisely what we want. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next motor. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next motor, which is our X carriage, which is behind our Z axis. So we're gonna grab our last 13 foot cable here. And once again, these are four conductor wires. The other conductors we'll use later on. One's gonna be for the LED light ring and the other's for the micro limit switches. So let's go ahead and move to our X carriage, which is behind the Z axis. Okay, so once again, we're gonna follow the same steps. We're gonna loosen our pins first, and then we're gonna correspond our wire colors to our motor. All right, just make sure that all those inserts are at the bottom of your connector here. And let's go ahead and grab our 13 foot cable. So just like our other motors, I'm gonna prep my wires and the way that they're gonna be inserted into the connector. So you see I have red, blue, green, and yellow. Just matching up the colors here. Insert those into the connector. I'm gonna tighten down each pen. All right, once again, we're gonna just gonna reference back to our motor color wires, make sure that each coil pair corresponds. So red, blue, green, and yellow, 
red, blue, green, and yellow. Make sure that those wires are fully inserted. Once again, these connectors, if you do want to pull them out, it's that easy. You just click them back into place and that completes our X carriage motor. So let's move on to our next motor. Okay, so over here on the right side of the machine, you can see I have all of these set up and the way that I want to insert these into the connector. So you can see here, red, blue, green, and yellow. Those are matching and we're just going to correspond the colors. It's that easy. So we're going to insert each one of these wires into our connector. Just like so. And then we're going to tighten down each one of these pens on top. Okay, so once you have those connections established, just double check your wiring. Make sure that you have these corresponding to the coil pairs of the motor. So we have red, blue, green, and yellow. Red, blue, green, and yellow. And that looks great. Okay, on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our micro limit switches, as well as gathering our additional wire that we're gonna need for this step. So what we have here is three of our micro limit switch kits, which are included in this whole bundle. I have two of them already assembled and then one broken out here for you. We're gonna assemble this one together. And we have our LED light ring. And of course our wire, we have two conductor wire, 18 feet. We have three conductor wire at seven feet and then two at 13 feet. And of course I have my tooling over here. I have my ball drivers as well as a flathead screwdriver. Okay, so first I'm gonna go ahead and start with my micro limit switches. What I have here is the two that are already assembled. You can see that my screw is coming through the top face here where the screw heads are attached. And this is a configuration for mounting our x-axis as well as our y-axis. So these are going to be homing switches. So you can see these two are identical. And then for this micro limit switch, you can see that I have all my components laid out that are included in your kit. So once you unload the contents, this is what you'll see for each micro limit switch. This one in particular is going to be configured a little bit differently than the other two. So we're going to go ahead and assemble this one. It's pretty simple. What we have here is two of our M3 self-threading screws, a drop-in T-nut, one of our uh, slot washers here, one nylon spacer, and then an M5 screw. So what we're going to do is take this, this back plate here with the actual switch attached, solder to the PCB case here. And we're gonna stack on our top plate here. And what I'm gonna do is run these M3 screws through each one of these holes on that top plate. So you'll see these two holes, that's where we're gonna attach those screws. Now these are self-threading, so it'll go right into that plastic pretty easily. Just make sure that you align that second hole here. And let's attach that additional screw. So that's what you should see. You can see we have this gap in between. That's where our nylon spacer comes into place. I'm just gonna slide that in between each one of these PCB plates. And instead of running the screw through this top side, we're gonna run it through the back side. And that's for the configuration we need on our Z axis. So we're gonna have limit switches on the Z, X, and Y axis. So once you have that screw ran through, we're gonna take our, our washer here attach that to the screw, and thread on our drop-in T-nut. And that's prepped and ready to go, just like that. All right, so we're gonna set that one back down, and let's go ahead and move on to positioning of each one of these micro limit switches. Okay, so first I wanna focus on the X-axis first. So when we do a homing cycle with our machines, we like to bring it to the front left position. So that's pretty much like a starting position for any machine. So your material is going to be set up generally towards the front of the machine. So once you home your machine, it's going to be placed right where it needs to be so you can set up that zero point. So that's what's convenient for us. You can always configure this differently. If you prefer the micro limit switches in the back right corner, we've seen that done as well. It's all up to your preference. So focusing on the x-axis, what I'm going to do is mount my micro limit switch to the left side of the machine. I want it to go to the left when it homes. So let's go ahead and focus on that left side of the machine. So here at the left side of the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and take my micro limit switch where the screw is facing these screw heads that are attached to the plate. Your solder joints are on the back end. And I'm going to mount this right next to the black angle corner connector. 
Just make sure that's nice and straight and it's attached properly. And now what you'll see is interaction between your X carriage and that micro limit switch. Okay, so now that we have that micro limit switch placed, let's go ahead and move on to our next micro limit switch. So the next micro limit switch I wanna place is the Y axis micro limit switch. So what we have here is a Cartesian style machine. So basically it's two motors moving in unison to move the whole gantry. So that's what we consider our Y1 and Y2. There's always gonna be a clone axis, but theoretically this is a three axis machine with a clone axis. So what we have is our Y axis, which is on the right side of the machine if you're facing the front, and then your Y2 motor, which is on the left side of the machine if you're to face the front. So what I like to do is place my Y axis micro limit switch to the Y1 motor. So that's gonna be on the right side of the machine if you're to face the front of the machine. So let's go ahead and move to the right side of the machine. Okay, so now that we're facing the right side of the machine here, this is our Y1 motor. What I'm gonna do is take our micro limit switch. And remember this is configured where the solder joints are on the back. It's exactly what we want here. And then on the top slot of the C-beam is where I'm gonna place this micro limit switch. And what I like to do is give myself a little room. You'll see where we have our belt tensioner placed. So basically you want that micro limit switch right above that. Just like so. And then when the Y gantry moves forward, it's gonna interact with this micro limit switch. And you can always adjust the position of this later on. If you feel like you don't have enough travel here, you always have the ability to change that position. So let's go ahead and move on to our last micro limit switch, which is for the Z axis. Okay, so our last micro limit switch here, you can see that our solder joints are facing the front and that's for the interaction of our Z axis wheel. So as this gantry system moves up and down, the wheel is what's gonna hit the plunger of the micro limit switch, sending that signal of the homing sequence. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the right side of our Z gantry. So what we're gonna do is attach that micro limit switch right here on this front track of the C-beam. And the idea is to have this nylon hex nut interact with the plunger of the micro limit switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this to where we have max travel. It's always the, the goal here when placing your switches. You don't wanna limit yourself. So now that I've got that in place, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and shift my Z axis up And you'll see that interaction right here once my z-axis is maxed out. So that's exactly what we want there. So that's good interaction with the micro limit switch. So let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so moving forward, what we're gonna do next is attach our LED light ring to our router spindle mount. So in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and take our black angle corner connectors off of each slot of the C-beam here. And what I like to do is just loosen it slightly these are all drop-in T-nuts. And it's that easy, you just remove that, keep the drop-in T-nuts in place. And we're gonna flip this to the back end. We're gonna take off the two black angle corner connectors here mounting to the bottom of this router spindle mount. And taking the LED light ring, we're gonna go ahead and attach that to the bottom of the router spindle mount. And what we're doing here is aligning the holes to our router spindle mount. So we're going to use these outer two holes. And that's where the black angle corner connectors come back into play. And that should be the end result there. So let's go ahead and flip the router spindle mount back over. And if you remember from our mechanical assembly, we'll have marks indicating two inches above the gantry. So that's simply where we're going to place each one of our black angle corner connectors. Okay, so now that we have our router spindle mount attached to our Z axis, it's time to move on to connecting each one of our wires. So let's go ahead and start with our LED light ring here, grabbing our two conductor wire at 18 feet. Let's start with that one first. So what you'll see here on the LED light ring is this two pin connector. And what we're going to do is loosen the pins on top and insert our ground in positive and reattach that to our connection right here. So let's go ahead and loosen each one of these pins. 
and you'll see that the inserts here are at the bottom of the connector. That's precisely what we want. And when it comes to establishing this connection, you'll see that there are indications at the bottom of the LED light ring, which state negative and positive. But I'm gonna show you here, negative, which is black, is gonna be on the left, and positive is gonna be on the right. So inserting those wires, as I just stated, black on the left, red on the right. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down each pin. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach that back to our LED light ring. And taking the additional amount of wire, I'm just gonna throw that towards the back for now. Don't worry about the mess. Once again, we're gonna label all these wires and just simplify this whole process. Okay, so next we're left with three of our wires, two at 13 feet and one at seven feet. The seven foot cable is gonna go with our Y axis, which is on the right side. So this is gonna be an attachment to the micro limit switch three conductor wire. So let's put that one over to the right side for now. And then these two 13 foot cables, one's gonna to attach to our Z axis here in front of us. And then the other is gonna to attach to our X axis micro limit switch, which is to the left of the machine. So let's focus there first. So what we have here is our extension connection system here. So there's a three pin connector that's attached to the female port that's soldered to the PCB case of the micro limit switch. So what I just did is I detached the male connector and that's where we're gonna attach our three conductor wire to. And you'll see here that we have ground, positive, and signal. So what we're gonna do is match up our three conductor wire as it shows here. Ground is black, red is our V plus, just positive. Then our signal, of course, is the blue. Okay, so what we're going to start with first is loosening each one of these pins on our three pin connector. And then taking our three conductor wire, using our micro limit switch as reference here, it's pretty simple. We're going to have ground to the left next to it. This is going to be the positive and then our signal. So ground, positive, and signal. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. All right, and just give those a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted. That looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back into my micro limit switch. I'm gonna take this wire and go underneath my X-axis C-beam. And that's what you should see. Black to the left, red in the center, blue on the right side. So now that we've completed our X-axis micro limit switch, let's go ahead and move to our Z-axis. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and take this male pin connector out of the micro limit switch. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and connect my wires and then insert that back into the micro limit switch. So taking our flathead screwdriver, let's go ahead and loosen each one of these pins. And taking our 13 foot wire, our three conductor wire, once again, with the pins facing upright, black to the left, red in the center, blue on the right. Now this will be consistent for all of our micro limit switches. So just make sure those pins are facing upright and you follow the pattern here. Okay, so that's a solid connection there. Now I'm just gonna reattach this to my micro limit switch on my Z axis. And this one I'm gonna throw over top of my X axis C beam. Remember we're gonna label all these wires, so don't worry about the mess right now. Let's move on to our Y-axis micro limit switch, which is on the right side of the machine. All right, so just like we did our others, taking that male connector off, let's go ahead and loosen each one of these pin connectors. In the same way we configured our other wires with black on the left, red in the center, blue on the right. We're gonna do the same thing here. And this wire length is at seven feet. So this is the smallest of the three. Okay, once again, black on the left, red in the center, and blue on the right side. Hold those in place and tighten down those pins. Give those wires a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted. That looks great. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this back into our micro limit switch. And we're gonna take this one and throw it towards the back with the others. And the next step, we're gonna be labeling all these wires. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna be labeling all of our wires. So what we need to gather is just some painter's tape and a black Sharpie here. 
or a pen, whatever you have available, as long as the mark does not come off of the tape. This is very important because all this labeling is going to tell us where we need to attach our wires to our controller. So let's go ahead and get started here first with our top motor. I'm going to start with all the motors first, which is four conductor wire. And at the top here, this is our Z axis. So I'm going to locate the point of origin and I'm going to trace that wire back. Okay, so I found my Z axis motor wire. So what I'm going to do now is take my painter's tape, wrap it around this wire. And instead of creating a flag, I wrap it all the way around. That way it doesn't get snagged once I run this through the drag chain. So I would suggest that you do the same. You can see it's just wrapped all the way around. And I'm going to label this one ZM for Z motor. So that's what I'm going to label it. So now that we have our Z motor labeled, let's go ahead and move on to our X motor, which is right here, located on the back of the Z axis, the X carriage. So again, it's going to be a four conductor wire. We're going to trace it from the point of origin and taking another piece of tape here. I'm going to label this one XM for X motor. All right, now that we have the X motor complete, let's go ahead and move to the left side of the machine. So this is going to be the Y axis motor, the Y1. You can tell that, okay, because we're facing the back of the machine and that'll be on the left side. So let's go ahead and locate that point of origin. Remember, once again, it's going to be a four conductor wire. So I found it. We're going to go ahead and take another piece of tape. And I'm going to label this one Y motor. So YM for Y motor. And the Y2 motor, I'll label Y2M. All right, so that one's complete. Let's go ahead and move to our Y2 motor, which is on the right side of the machine if you were to face the back. So again, make sure you trace it from the point of origin. All right, taking a piece of tape here. I'm going to wrap that all the way around. I'm going to label this to Y2M. Okay, so now that we have the Y2 motor located, that completes all of our motors. So let's go ahead and move on to our LED light ring next, which is two conductor wire and is located here by the Z axis. So I'm going to trace it from the point of origin here. So here's our two conductor wire. Taking another piece of tape here. I'm just going to label this one LED. All right, that one's complete. Let's go ahead and move to our micro limit switch, which is on the Z axis here. So again, I'm going to trace it from the point of origin and the micro limit switches are going to be three conductor wire, same process. And the micro limit switches, I'm going to label ZML for Z micro limit. So next I'm going to move to my X micro limit switch, which is here running underneath our X axis C beam. So again, trace it from that point of origin. And this one will be labeled XML. Okay, next we have our Y axis micro limit switch, which is on the left side of the machine here. Once again, we're going to trace that from the point of origin, which is at the front of the machine. See, it's three conductor wire. And we're going to label this one YML, Y micro limit. And that completes the labeling of our wire. So now that everything is labeled, this is really going to help once we come back to our controller because now everything has an indication. We don't have to trace anything back. We can run everything through our drag chain without concerning ourselves with, you know, what goes where. So this is a really important step. So just make sure you do it correctly. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're going to be assembling our x-axis drag chain to our work B1510. So what I've gathered here is the parts that we're going to use in this step. I've got my thousand millimeter drag chain here, a single L bracket, one M5 25 millimeter screw, one nine millimeter aluminum spacer, two M3 T nuts, one M5 T nut and two M3 eight millimeter screws. Along with that, I also have my thousand millimeter slot cover and we will be cutting this down to fit along this cable tray here. So, the tools that I've gathered are to the right. I have my ball drivers. I have a pair of snips or wire cutters. I have a snipping end. And then I have some painter's tape here that we're gonna use. So let's go ahead and get started. So first I'm gonna take my single L bracket and I'm going to mount it to this X carriage plate. So underneath the motor here, we're gonna have a single hole where this single L bracket will reside. 
And we're gonna configure this with our 25 millimeter screw, a nine millimeter aluminum spacer, and M5 T-nut. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus in here to this hole, and we're gonna start that assembly. So as you can see, now that I'm focused in here to the X carriage plate, you'll see this hole right here in the middle. That's exactly where we're gonna put our screw. So taking the single L bracket, you'll see that we have spacing that differs here. We're gonna take this in that's closest to the edge and we're gonna mount that to the plate. The opposite end will attach to our drag chain. So taking the 25 millimeter screw, I'm gonna run that through the single L bracket, taking my nine millimeter aluminum spacer, gonna put that on top of the screw, and then I'm gonna run it through the center hole here of the X carriage plate. Now on the opposite end, I'm gonna use my M5 T-nut, I'm gonna thread it onto the screw and tighten that system down. Okay, so making sure that that system's nice and tight there. You can always straighten up the bracket with your ball driver. Just shift it around. But that's a solid mount there. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so next I'm going to turn my attention to these M3 T-nuts. And I'm going to go ahead and place one of these into the 20 by 40 cable tray. So that's where our drag chain on the opposite end is going to attach. So we're going to use one of the M3 8 millimeter screws through the drag chain end cap into the M3 T-nut. So what I'm gonna do is turn to the left side of the machine here if you're to face the back. And I'm gonna loosen up these two screws that are holding the cable tray together. I'm gonna to slide this out and insert an M3 T-nut. That way we're in position to where we can mount our drag chain. Okay, so over here at the left side of the machine, you will see two screws that are attached to this 20 by 40 cable tray. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and loosen each one of these screws and take the screws out. That way I can shift this cable tray. Okay, so we're going to shift this out. Should be rather easy. And then grabbing one of the M3 T-nuts, we're going to slide that into place here. Just like so. And then we're going to push that 20 by 40 back in place. And then insert your screws and tighten that system back down. Okay, so now that we've finished this, let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so next I'm gonna turn my attention to my X-axis drag chain, which is at 1,000 millimeters. The other drag chain is going to be at 2,000 millimeters, which we're gonna downsize that to fit this 1,500 profile. So what we need to do is gather the wires that will be inserted into this drag chain. So we have our Z-axis motor, which will be inserted, our X motor, as well as the LED light ring and our Z micro limit switch. So let's go ahead and gather those wires together. First, I'm gonna take all the wires that are bundled from the front of the machine, the Z axis area, set those off to the side. I'm gonna run that Y motor through the plate and across this cable tray here. So over here on the right side, you'll see the square hole on the plate. And the purpose of that is for your wire to be able to run through that. So we're going to go ahead and run this Y motor through. So the only two wires that are going to be excluded from the X axis drag chain are going to be for the Y motor and our X micro limit switch. So we've got our Y and our X micro limit switch set off to the side here. The Y motors ran through our plate. So let's turn our attention back to our wires that are going to be running through our drag chain. Okay, so I'm taking these bundles of wires here. And I'm going to find the ends of each one. So you can see I have some three conductor, four conductor. Should be two motors, one micro limit switch, and then of course the LED light ring, which is the longest wire. And what I'm going to do is take some of my painter's tape and I'm going to bundle these together. And it just really helps when you're feeding it through the drag chain, keeping these all together. So I grab a good amount of tape here and I'm trying to capture the top ends of the wires because that's generally what will snag on the drag chain and then finding the top end of the drag chain that's going to mount to the single L bracket we're going to feed it through this top end here and I'll show you the difference so this is how the drag chain is going to lay on the cable tray you'll see that the top end cap here is connected in this direction so it's going to mount to the bottom of the single L bracket with one of our M3 8 millimeter screws and then the opposite end is gonna to mount to another M3 screw that we inserted into that 20 by 40. 
So this is how you want it here. And we want to insert the wires in this top portion of the drag chain. Okay, so taking the wires that we just bundled together, I'm just going to feed that through the top end of the drag chain here. Okay, and once I see it come through the other end, I'm just going to pull that slack through. Okay, so I have all my wires ran through, most of the slack is pulled through. And what I like to do is leave some of the slack out here just to ensure that I have travel on my Z axis. You don't want the wire so tight that it's going to pull the connections loose. Running this wire back here, I'm going to get a good feel of where the position needs to be, especially for the LED light ring and the micro limit switch, because on this top left side of the C beam of the Z axis, we're gonna run a slot cover in place. So I left some slack here, this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna run my drag chain onto the cable tray here. I'm gonna leave it here for now. And we're gonna turn our attention to the left side. We need to run all these wires back through our wide gantry plate. So over on this end, I'm just gonna find the ends of my wires that we bundled together. And I'm gonna run that through this wide gantry plate. Now be careful of the edges, they are sharp and it will try to strip your wire, so just be careful there. And you'll see that M3 T-nut. We're just going to sift that back slightly. So what we're going to do here is we have two wires. We have our X micro limit switch and then our Y axis motor. That's going to be running through the cable tray. Now, the only issue is these two wires are too large to accept a slot cover on top of both. So what I'm going to do is take my x-axis micro limit switch and I'm going to run it through this top track of the C-beam, which is also going to run through this gantry plate here. So taking my x micro limit switch, I'm going to go ahead and run it through this top lip of the C-beam here through the x carriage plate. Just go ahead and pull that slack through. And you can see the way that I have it laid here, I want to just maximize my travel. So there's no interference here with the gantry plate hitting the wire. And then the slot cover that we cut down to measure for the 20 by 40, we're going to go ahead and slide through. So I'm going to start here towards the back. You can pretty much just push that down through the C-beam and run it to the edge. And that's what you should see for the X micro limit switch. And what I'm going to do is from the top end of the left side here, I'm going to take the micro limit switch and I'm going to run it through the square hole once again on our Y gantry plate. And next taking our Y motor, what I'm going to do here is keep the end on the table here and taking one more of our thousand millimeter slot covers here. We're going to take another two inches off and I'm going to start pressing in the slot cover here to the 20 by 40 just to get it started. And once that's complete, I've got it started here. I'm gonna take the end of the Y motor and bring it over here to the end of the drag chain. You'll see a slot towards the end of the end cap. And I'm gonna weave it through there and through our Y gantry plate. And we're gonna pull that additional slack. I'm just going to move my drag chain to the left side here. You'll see the wires will keep it intact. That way I can start inserting the slot cover. Okay, once the slot cover is in place, simply take the drag chain. We're going to put it back into position here on the cable tray. Remember to leave yourself some slack here for these wires because we're going to be placing a 250 millimeter slot cover here on the Z axis. So now that I have the drag chain in position, Taking one of our M3 eight millimeter screws, I'm gonna go right through the center hole of the drag chain here. And I'm gonna hold that into place and taking an M3 T-nut here, I'm gonna thread that on top of the screw. Just gonna hand tighten it for now. You can always come back in with your ball driver once you have it in position and just tighten that down into place. You'll see that the drag chain is oriented in a nice low profile position. That's exactly what we want. It's underneath the motor here and it's pretty much hidden by the X axis C beam. So this is looking sharp so far. We'll take our additional wire length. Remember we want to hang on to some of this wire length. We'll pull some of the slack later, 
once we insert our slot cover and we know how much wire we need. So let's go ahead and turn our attention here to the left side of the drag chain. So if you remember, we inserted that M3 T-nut. Well, now we're gonna mount to that T-nut with one of our M3 eight millimeter screws. So I come in here with my ball driver and screw. And the idea is just sift these wires out of the way because they're gonna block that hole. Just tighten down that screw. And now we're gonna go ahead and move to the Z axis. We're gonna insert that slot cover. So here on the right side of the Z axis here, you'll see we have our LED light ring wire as well as the micro limit switch. Now we have a 250 millimeter slot cover. What I wanna do is cut this down to size so we can fit our wires through without any interference. Once again, I'm gonna take about two inches off the slot cover. And what I like to do generally is just run those wires through the slot cover initially. It really helps when you're trying to slide this into the track and then press into the C-beam here and snap it into place. You can always pull some of that additional slack through. And the idea with the additional slack that we have left over that's in front of the drag chain, you don't want to have any interference here with the Z-axis's movement. So you can see as I shift this down, there's no limitation here. Now, if you had this too tight, inevitably this would pull the wires causing a disconnection in your micro limit switch or your LED light ring. So we're trying to avoid that here. Just make sure you have enough slack. We'll shift that upright to its max level position. And now we can take some of the additional slack out of our motor, which is here, our X motor, as well as our micro limit switch and LED light ring. So I'm coming over here to the right side. I'm going to pull some of that slack through. So what I like to do is keep this right above that cable tray lip here on the X carriage. And pull some of that slack out of the X motor. And then, of course, the Z axis motor here. All right, so we have all of our slack pulled through. And on a later step, we'll come in and we'll zip tie everything, make sure everything's nice and tidy. So now that we have our slot cover here in the Z axis, everything's really starting to come together. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our Y axis drag chain to our Y axis. So what I've got gathered here is all the parts that we're gonna be using for this step. So I have two single L brackets, one end cap, two M3 eight millimeter screws, two M3 T-nuts, one M5 T-nut, one M5 15 millimeter screw. I also have my 2000 millimeter drag chain here. I have two slot covers, one at 1000 millimeters and then the other at 500 millimeters. And of course, my tooling, I've got some snips, wire cutters that can be used as snips, as well as my ball driver set, some painter's tape here. And we'll also need our power drill. So first to get started, let's turn our attention to the drag chain here. You can see that I've already tore off some links. This is a total of 27 links that have been taken off of the 2000 millimeter drag chain. And that's because the 2000 millimeter drag chain is too long for this 1500 millimeter axis. So each link is considered one of these sections. So count out 27 of those and remove those and we've got some additional drag chain we can use for another project. So once we have that complete, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the back section of the machine. So you can see my front of the machine here is to the left. So we're gonna go towards the back and we're gonna take off one of these end caps. So taking our power drill, I'm gonna remove each one of these self-tapping screws. And we will be reusing these self-tapping screws, so just put those to the side. And once we've removed that end cap, we're gonna take one of the single L brackets and we're looking for the side that's closest to the seam. That's going to mount to this bottom slot of the 20 by 40. I'm gonna take one of my self tappers. We're gonna mount that back into place. Okay, so now that we have that back into position, I'm gonna take one of my end caps with a self tapping screw and plug this hole here on the top portion of the 20 by 40. Okay, so that completes the mounting of the single L bracket here with our end cap. So next, I'm gonna take my additional single L bracket, my 15 millimeter screw, and M5 T-nut. I'm gonna move over here to this Y gantry system. 
we have two holes on the outer ends of the plate. We're going to use a second hole to the bottom here, and we're going to mount this single L bracket into place. So once again, taking notice here to the hole spacing and how it differs on the single L bracket, we're looking for that hole spacing that's closest to the seam here. That's going to mount to our plate. So let's take the 15 millimeter screw, run that through the second hole, and taking my ball driver and M5 T nut, I'm going to fasten this into place. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. So now I'm taking my wires. I'm going to find the ends of each one of these wires. So basically what we're going to add is our X micro limit switch that came off of the X axis here as well as that Y motor that ran across. And we're also going to add our additional Y axis motor here. So we already have a bundle of wires that's been taped. So we're going to find that end real quick. We should have three additional wires that are going to be added to this bundle. The only wire that will not be added is our Y axis micro limit switch, which is towards the front of our machine. We'll leave that one out. That's going to be contained by our slot covers. So once again, taking some of this painter's tape, we're going to wrap the ends of these wires just like so. And taking the drag chain, I'll set these in here so we can go over the placement of the drag chain. Similar to how we did the x-axis drag chain, this is exactly how we're going to do the y-axis. This is going to mount from underneath our single L bracket here on this side. And then, of course, this opposite end is going to mount on top of the single L bracket on the back side. So we need to feed all of our wires through the top side of the drag chain. Okay, so once you have all the wires ran through the drag chain here, we're simply going to attach this top portion to our single L bracket. What I like to do is make sure that I have enough slack here in the system so I'm not straining the wires. So what I'm going to do is mount underneath the center hole of the drag chain. So taking one of these M3 eight millimeter screws, I'm gonna push it through this end cap and taking one of the M3 T-nuts, thread that right on top. I do is hand tighten it for now, ensuring that I do have it in place. And from there, I can pull any of the additional slack out of the system because now I know how much slack I needed. Okay, so now moving towards the back of the system here, we're going to go ahead and mount the back end of the drag chain. So coming here to the back end of the drag chain, we're going to use this outer left hole here of the drag chain. I'm going to place a screw through. And what I generally do is I'll shift this system off the table slightly so I can access the bottom. All right, making sure that's nice and tight. I'm gonna push this back. So next, I'm gonna take my Y-axis micro limit switch, which is the only wire we left out, and I'm gonna run it through the bottom track of the C-beam here, through our Y gantry plate. Go ahead and pull all that slack through. And then taking my thousand millimeter slot cover, I'm gonna start the left side, shift it through. And you'll see we have this additional gap here on the right side. So we're going to take our 500 millimeter slot cover and cut that down to size based on how much length we need. So I cut about an inch off of my slot cover here and I'm going to run it on down the back end of the system. And then we'll run that YX micro limit switch wire with the rest of our additional wires here. All right, so that completes the assembly of the Y axis drag chain. As you can see, this is placed in a low profile position. It's exactly what I wanted. Everything's ran back to the back. It's nice and neat. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna be assembling our black box motion control system as well as our 24 volt power supply. So each one of these comes with an assembly. So the power case kit, which you can see here is already assembled to my power supply. And then, you, of course, you have your black box motion control system. Each one of these has its own assembly video, which I will link in the description. And I will also add a tag at the top of this video. So make sure you follow along with those, get these built up. It's extremely easy, probably about five minutes for each assembly. And then once you get that done, we'll move back here and get our wires set up and get everything plugged in and configured properly. So what I have here is some of the parts that come with the black box motion control system, you see that I have some of these pin connectors already separated from the black box, but each one of these 
comes onto the actual black box. So each one of these limit switches, as well as motors, they all have a pin connector already attached to the board. So what I did is I laid out a couple. These are the ones that we're gonna be using. I've got the four pin connectors set up here. So four of those, three of the three pin male connectors, which is for our micro limit switches. I also have a flexible tubing clamp, which will be added with this, this bundle that's included with the work bee. I also have my corrugated tubing here. This is at one foot. This comes with the black box kit, as well as an eight millimeter screw, two M5 six millimeter screws, and three drop in T nuts. Aside from that, we have our power cable here that will be plugged into our power supply. We also have our power wire, which will provide power to our black box motion control system. So everything that you see here, we're gonna go ahead and lay out for this step. I also have my tooling here, my ball driver and flathead screwdriver. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. First, I wanna take each one of our M5 six millimeter screws and configure those to the black box. The way I'm gonna mount this is upright so you have access to your switch. So what I'm gonna do is take my two M5 six millimeter screws and set them up in each section of the black box. So one here, taking a drop in T-nut, I'm gonna thread that onto the screw. On the next section here, add another drop in T-nut. And just like that. And the reason for doing so is once we attach our motors, you won't have access to that hole anymore. So we're just gonna get that out of the way so we can mount this once we get it plugged in. So next I wanna turn our attention to our power supply unit. What we have here is the power case assembly. It's already been attached. One thing to pay attention to is the side of the power supply. You're gonna see a switch here that shows 115 volt. Now, if you're in the States, that's exactly what you want. Most likely yours is switched to the 230. So just go ahead and switch that to the 115 or your power supply will not provide power to your black box. So that's something to go ahead and get done real quick. Okay, so moving forward here, we're gonna start attaching our motor wires and micro limit switches to our black box. So what I'm gonna do for each one of these pins, just like we did with our motors, we're gonna loosen all of our pin connectors on top here and prep these for the insertion of the wire. So you should see each one of those inserts at the bottom of your connector. And then from there, we're looking for four conductor wire, which is our motor wires. So I've located one here. This is our Y motor. So remember, we're gonna have a Y1 and a Y2. This is our standard Y motor. So we're gonna go ahead and position these wires in the order that they're going to be inserted into the pen. So working our way from left to right with these pen connectors, we're gonna start with red, blue, green, and then yellow. So just follow what I do here. Once you have those connected, Go ahead and tighten down each pen. All right, now I just like to give those a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted. And that looks good. So coming over here to the black box, you'll see that our input section here, each side is going to indicate which motor is which. So we have these labeled. This one's my Y motor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in. It's that easy. Next, I'm gonna locate another motor wire. Once again, four conductor wire, and this one's labeled Z motor. So this will be for my Z axis. Once again, I'm gonna prep these wires, loosen each pen on the connector here. And once again, working our way from left to right here, red, blue, green, and then yellow. All right, give those a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted. Once again, make sure that your wire colors do match what I have here. The pins upright should be red, blue, green, and yellow. All right, so we're gonna plug this one into the Z motor section, which is stated right here on the furthest left side of the black box. All right, so I'm gonna locate another motor here. Next, we have our Y2 motor. Once again, we're gonna prep these wires and loosen up that pin connector. Okay, so for the Y2 motor, this is gonna be configured a little bit differently. And the reason for doing so is because this machine is belt driven. So what we have is two motors on each side that are actually flipped in the opposite direction. So in order to have these 
motor is moving in unison, we need to invert one axis. So what I'm gonna do is work my way left to right with yellow, green, blue, and red. And that'll invert the axis. That way this machine will run in a straight direction versus having the motors basically fight each other. So there's no real way to configure that in the software. Because this is a clone axis, it needs to mimic what the other is doing. So we always invert the Y2 motor. All right, give those a tug, make sure they're fully inserted, looks good. We're moving to the Y2 motor here. It's just to the left of the Y motor. All right, and then let's locate our X axis motor. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and prep these wires, insert it into the pin connector, and plug it into the black box. Okay, so for the X motor, this will not be inverted. This will be our standard configuration here. So red, blue, green, and then yellow, working our way from left to right, and tighten down that connector. All right, just give this a tug, and let's insert that to the controller. Now all of our motors are connected, so we're gonna move on to our limit switches. So I have my Z micro limit switch here. I'm gonna go ahead and prep the wire, grab one of our three pin connectors. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing we did with the four pins, loosen first, insert the wires, and plug it into our controller. Now up at the top of the controller board, you'll see indications here for ground, positive, and signal. So we're gonna simply match that. So what we need to do is insert the ground, which is black, to the left, red in the middle, blue to the right, and that's our signal. So just like that. Now if you were to have a different type of micro limit switch, generally they don't come with the uh, positive uh, wire. So generally it's just ground and signal for a normally open configuration. Well, with our limit switches, we have the positive wire for the LED light that indicates when you trigger the micro limit switch. If you have a different type of micro limit switch, all you would do is bypass the positive wire here. So you'd simply wire your ground and your signal and you would plug it in just like that. So this is our Z micro limit switch. Go ahead and plug that in. All right, and let's move forward to the next. Same exact thing, this is the Y micro limit switch. So the Y limit switch is gonna be plugged into the Y limit section of the black box. And last, we should have the X micro limit switch and same exact thing, and we'll plug that one back into the black box. That's what you should see there, and plug that into the X limit section and there you have it we have our micro limit switches configured as well as our motors so everything's set up on this side of the controller next we're going to go ahead and connect our power supply wire here to our power supply so you'll see black here is negative white is positive it's already been configured for you simply plug that into a section of the port and the opposite end will then plug into the power supply unit section of the black box. Okay, last one we have here is our LED light ring, which we've labeled and it's two conductor wire. It's the smallest wire here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and prep this and we're gonna plug this directly into the power supply unit. So you'll see we have an additional two pin connector here on the power supply. We'll pop that loose, loosen up our pins and insert this wire. So black on the left, red on the right, and plug that into the power supply unit. All right, so now we're pretty much done with the power supply for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this off to the side. Generally, I like to put my power supply either underneath my table or on the ground somewhere next to the machine. Once again, you know, you can configure that any way that you like. But next, we're gonna just go ahead and focus on our black box and where we're gonna mount this. So taking the black box here, we're gonna turn our attention towards the back of the machine. And what I like to do is configure my black box here to where I have about a foot in between the black box and then this end plate here on the back end of the machine. So it's pretty much centered in the back of the machine. You can always configure it differently if you like. This is just what I like to do for this specific design. So with the drop-in T-nuts in place, simply tighten those down 
So we get a nice solid mount here. So next I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the right screw. And that's locked in place right there. Looks sharp. All right, so next we're gonna do some of the aesthetics for this machine. What I like to do is take the corrugated tubing here and get a nice run off of the input section of the black box. So taking this corrugated tubing, I'm gonna kind of split it like so and encase these wires. Now I like to do it right before where I labeled the wires. That way I can always see how I labeled these wires and what goes where. So starting with the top here, you can then pretty much just shift these wires to one side of the flex tubing and get it into place. All right, so now that we have our flex tubing in place, next I'm going to go ahead and take my flex tubing clamp here. I'm going to clamp it right in the middle. That way we can offer the system some support. Grab that 8 millimeter screw. So once I get the 8 millimeter screw in place, I cap it off here with the drop in T nut. And once I get that into position, I'm going to use the second track here of the 20 by 40. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this into place. All right, now that we have our flex tubing in place here, it's time to go ahead and move on to the aesthetics portion of this build. We're gonna use some zip ties and just get everything nice and tidied up. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and tidy up our machine. Got 15 zip ties here and I've got a pair of snips that I'm gonna use. So first we're gonna start with some of these four pin connectors that are attached to our motor. So up at the top here, we're gonna focus on both our X motor and Z axis motor. So starting with the X motor here, you'll see that we have our male and female connector here. What I'm gonna do is take a zip tie, run it through each sets of wires, and tighten that down. Snip off the excess and that completes that connector there. Next, we'll move on to the Z-axis motor. Once again, same thing, run it through both sets of wires. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and bundle these wires together. So what we have is our micro limit switch on the Z-axis as well as the LED light ring. Then of course, our Z-axis motor. I'm just gonna go ahead and zip tie these together to create a bundle so it looks nice and uniform. All right, so that's complete. So next we're gonna go ahead and move over to the left side of the machine if you're face to back. So right down here at the Y gantry plate. So what I like to do is bundle these wires just like we did with that Z axis. Keep everything nice and uniform here. And don't forget to zip tie this four pin connector that's attached to our Y axis motor. Okay, so that completes the left side. Let's move on to the right side of the machine here. We have our Y2 motor. We're gonna zip tie that connector and then move towards the back where our black box is stationed and we'll finish tidying up that area as well. All right, once you have that zip tied, once again, we're just gonna snip off the excess. All right, now let's move back to the black box. All right, taking our additional zip ties here. What I like to do is create a bundle out of these wires and then zip tie around and then I'll do it on each side. Now taking two of my zip ties, I'm going to extend this out so I can zip tie this whole area. What I want to do is strap this bundle underneath my flex tubing here. So I'm going to extend that out. and snip off the excess there. Once again, working our way to the right side here. All right, and that's starting to look really sharp. So, I mean, if you wanna go even further to really just kind of secure the system into place, you can always use the outer ends of this plate just to kind of strap this in place. 
Man, this machine is looking sweet. Great job so far. Let's go ahead and continue to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and attach our USB cable to our black box motion control system. And we're gonna connect that to our laptop so we can move on to the software portion of this video. And in that portion of the video, we're gonna go ahead and configure our settings and make sure that everything is in tune. That way you can go ahead and run your machine and create some awesome projects. So let's go ahead and get started here first with our USB cable. Simply unravel your USB cable here. You're gonna plug it into the USB port of your laptop and connect the serial port side, which is the larger side of the USB cable. And we're gonna go ahead and plug that into the black box. So over here on the right side of the black box, you'll see this USB connection here. That's for your serial port. You're gonna go ahead and connect that. So once you have that USB connection established, let's go ahead and move on to the software portion. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is open up our browser so we can download the Open Builds control software. So first, let's enter in openbuilds.com. And from here, you'll see the build list as well as the forum. This is just an awesome place for builders and engineers alike. There's so much information and just resources shared on this open source forum. It's just a community that is geared towards builders, machine lovers alike. So definitely a cool place to check out, um, as well as obviously the download for the software. So up at the top here, you will see the software tab, select that, and you'll have an option for the cam G code generator or the open builds control machine driver. So we're going to select the controller and here you'll see options for windows, Mac and Linux. I'm running a windows uh, computer. So we're going to go ahead and download that exe for windows and just go ahead and save that file to uh, whichever location that you prefer. Down here in the left, you'll see it downloading. And once it's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And right here, you'll see a couple prompts. We're gonna run through those. Obviously, these settings are to your preference. And click Install. Okay, now that that's finished, you'll see that you have a shortcut here for the control. You'll also see the indication to your right, notifying you that the Open Builds controller has started. And that's because we have a USB port plugged into our laptop. So the control software will initialize based on that USB port connection. So it basically recognize that there's a tool that's affiliated with the software. So up at the top here, you'll see options for COM ports. We're gonna select the second option here. It could be different for your computer, but you're looking for the FTDI USB to serial. We're gonna go ahead and connect. And the first thing that you'll notice is the alarm state here. All you have to do is simply click that to unlock, but we don't have power provided to our system yet. This is just simply configuring the settings into our controller. So I always like to just go ahead and unlock that alarm so we don't have any interference when trying to save these Gerbil settings to our controller. So there's a lot of cool features about the software. I'm gonna go over each and every one briefly, just to give you an understanding of how this works. It's very intuitive. Honestly, a lot of these things are self-explanatory, but we're definitely gonna go over some of the highlights. So the first thing that we wanna do since we have our USB connection established to our laptop, we're gonna go into Gerbil settings here, and we're gonna load a default setting. So one thing that's really convenient about this whole CNC endeavor is the bundle that you purchase from Open Builds is going to be supported by Open Build. So not only are you given free software, but you're also given free settings here. So all you have to do is select the machine profile that you have, and all your settings and values will be populated into your Gerbil settings. So it's super convenient. You can always go back and tweak those settings based on your likings. This is just a great way to start. So we have an Open Builds Work B. We're going to select that drop down. And we're going to search for the configuration that we have, which is the 1510. So go ahead and select that option. And right here, you'll see limit switches are installed. That's uh, default since the bundle comes with limit switches. If it doesn't, all you have to do is select this pen and save to firmware. So we do have limit switches installed. You can see that this is my default currently for this controller. But if it wasn't, you would come here and save to firmware. So go ahead and select save the firmware. It'll take a few seconds. I can show you 
what that looks like. It's going to say configuration updated reset Gerbil and say yes. From there, it's going to update those settings. So that was without limit switches. I'm going to go ahead and select limit switches installed because I do have limit switches. Save the firmware. And it's that easy. So all these settings are going to be populated here into your advanced settings tab. Once again, you can always tweak these settings based on your liking. So, I mean, that's different tolerances, hard limits, homing cycle. It all depends on what you're trying to do. It's uh, very easy as far as adjusting the settings. You can calculate your steps per millimeter here. There's a built-in calculator, which is awesome. Like I said, it's very intuitive, self-explanatory, a lot of this stuff. But since this is a machine bundle that you purchased, I would stick with these default settings. These have been tested thoroughly by open builds engineers as well as machine builders and they work great. So definitely just start off with these settings first and let's move on to the control tab, which is right up top here. Okay. So now that we have our Gerbil settings and put it to our controller, now it's time to go ahead and power on our machine. Okay, so now that we have our machine powered on, you should see your LED light ring activated here, shining brightly onto your work surface, as well as you'll hear the motors activate as well. They kind of put off like a humming sound. So we know everything's functioning correctly there. Power's provided to our system. So now we're going to go ahead and test our machine, make sure that everything is functioning correctly. All of our parameters are correct. Our axis is moving in the right direction. So positive and negative movements when jogging the machine is essential to understand that information. So we're going to go over some of that stuff now. So what we have here is our DROs, also known as uh, digital readouts. So we have X, Y, and Z coordinates here. And you can see that my machine is at a zero point. So this is generally where you would start when starting to manufacture a project. So what we need to do is go ahead and test these parameters out. The best thing to do is go down here to incremental jog. We don't want to do continuous jog yet. We're going to go to incremental. That way we know exactly how far our machine is going to move when we select one of the movements. So moving down to one millimeter increments here, I'm going to go ahead and jog my X axis to a positive movement. So that should bring this gantry to the right. So that's what we're looking for. Positive movement is going to be to the right in this quadrant. Negative movement is going to move back towards that left side. So let's go ahead and jog the x-axis to the right. And you can see that it is moving to the right. So I'm going to bump that back up to 10 millimeter increments here. And you can see it's moving smoothly here. Everything looks good. So I'm going to try a negative movement here. Make sure that everything's moving correctly on the way back. That looks good. So now moving to the y-axis. So a positive movement for the y-axis is going to move further back towards the back of the machine where our controller is. A negative movement is going to move back towards the front of the machine. So that's all that we really need to know there. So let's just make sure everything's functioning correctly for our y-axis. So let's go ahead and move positive. I'm still at 10 millimeter increments just to make sure everything is copacetic before we uh, bump to 100 millimeters. So you can see my positive movement is correct. It's moving back towards my controller. Negative movement is going to bring me right back. Man, this machine is sweet. Everything is functioning great. So let's go ahead and move to 100 millimeter increments here. Just to kind of show you the, the full duration of a, a large movement. So you can see this thing is operating great. So everything looks good there. So we have our negative and positive movements working correctly for X and Y. So next we need to test our Z. Now for the Z axis, since we have limited travel, we're looking for a small movement here. So we're going to go back down to one millimeter increments and we're going to execute a negative movement towards our spoiler. So negative is going to move down, positive is going to move up for the z-axis. So let's go ahead and try a negative movement. And you can see it is moving in the right direction. Positive movement, back up. That's great. So everything's functioning correctly for our x, y, and z-axis. So what we need to try now is a homing cycle. Now, before we do that, I want to show you the troubleshooting tab, which is right up top here. 
It's the third tab at the top. Go ahead and select troubleshooting. And you'll see here you have inputs and end stops. So we have one for X, Y, and Z. You also have your probe, door sensor, and different buttons if you want to configure that onto your controller. So we're looking for the X, Y, and Z limits. So what I'm going to do is go across the machine and I'm going to test each one. First at the Y axis, once I select this limit switch, you should see the LED light activate on the limit switch as well as an alarm code should be triggered. So you can see here that end stop is working correctly. We have a hard limit triggered. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that and you can see here that the Y limit is on and that's with the plunger pushed down. Once I release it, it's off. So you can see up top here, I'm at an alarm state. That's great because anytime that your machine interacts with a micro limit switch, it's going to stop the machine. So you don't have to worry about your machine basically going off track or ramming into the sides, you know, ruining your belt drive or any type of components the machine's built of. So now what we're looking for is the X limit. So the X limit is back on this side of the machine. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and move my machine towards that section. And as soon as that plate interacts with that limit switch, it's going to stop. Right there, hard limit's been triggered. So we know that that limit switch is functioning correctly. So coming down here to clear alarm, once again, you can always activate this alarm state and unlock it with this, this widget here on top. So coming back to the control tab, I'm going to test my Z limit switch. So I'm going to bring my X gantry over slightly so I can access that limit switch's plunger. And going back to the troubleshooting tab, once again, if I select the Z limit, you'll see that the alarm has been triggered. If you hit cancel here, you'll be able to see that indication on your end stops here. So you'll see that the Z axis is on. When I release, it's off. Back on when I select that plunger. Okay, so everything looks good there. So now what we need to do is go ahead and execute a homing cycle here. So up at the top, you'll see home all. What we're gonna do is go ahead and select that. If you have any issues with your machine going in the wrong direction, all you have to do is hit stop job here and it's immediate, it'll stop. But better yet, you can just power down your machine, just press the power button on your black box or your power supply and just kill the power to the machine. But these default settings are set up, so as long as you're following along with this video, everything should be set up correctly. So just for precaution's sake and safety, just make sure you keep an eye on the machine. So when I hit the homing cycle, you should see the Z axis come up first. It's gonna do a homing debounce once it's located the limit switch, and then it's gonna go to the Y axis limit switch, stops there, and then it's gonna locate the X axis micro limit switch. And from there, it'll do a homing debounce and reposition. Okay, perfect. So the homing cycle worked out great. No issues there. So our machine is set up and it's ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is just go over some of the other features that are included in this control software. What we have here is our control panel. So like I had showed you before, we have our X, Y, and Z coordinates here. You have incremental jog or a cool feature that's really nice is continuous jog. So you can actually select this here and in the wizards and tools, you can select this and go down to the drop down menu and customize your shortcut keys based on your preference. I generally go with the uh, default. It's pretty self-explanatory here. I like the arrow keys. So you can see all of these are set up based on a down key, up key, right, left, and so on and so forth. You can customize those to your preference, which is really cool. And then save and apply. And from there, you can jog your machine around based on that keystroke. So I'll move into the right now with the right arrow key, left. So as long as I hold down the key, it's gonna be continuous. So that's the whole idea behind the, the keystrokes for the continuous jogging. So you can see it's also the same for the Y axis, but it's just really easy to control your machine just on the keypad, kind of like a video game. So now we have the page up, page down. So that's for your Z axis, same thing. But just a really cool feature there. 
So now, of course, if you're uh, looking for more precise increments, go to the incremental jog there. And you have 10 millimeters, 1 millimeter, even down to a 0.1 millimeter. So pretty accurate. Up at the top here of the DROs, digital readouts, you'll see millimeters mode or inch. So based on your preference, I generally work in millimeters. The metric system for me, especially with these machines, just seems to be more precise, uh, less movements, inches, it's uh, a little more broad. So it, it comes down to your preference, you know, whatever you're uh, more comfortable with. But that option is available, which is really cool. Now, one really cool thing about the software that I love is a 3D viewer. So when you're uploading different projects, you're going to see the project uploaded here to the 3D viewer which is awesome. You can basically manipulate this like if it was in CAM software, zoom in, see your vectors, your different uh, tool paths that have been assigned, and of course, all your measurements here to the machine's profile that we have set up. And also here to the right side, you'll see your machine configuration. So this is the WorkB 1510. And what's really nice is, let's say you have multiple machines in your shop, Based on your controller settings, and if you're using OpenBuilds control software, you'll always see that machine populated here. And even if it's a custom machine design, you'll see basically a custom machine design here. So it's really cool just for reference, especially when you're using multiple machines to manufacture your projects. So this is really cool. We also have the serial console here, which is for communications and just understanding what's going on. If you see any errors or anything like that, you can always take a snippet of it and send it to the OpenBuilds forum just to troubleshoot problems and uh, get some answers to your questions. And then over here we have macros, which is a more advanced setting if you want to add you know, custom waypoints on your machine based on how you're manufacturing things, which is really cool to add. So that's definitely a feature that's available. So as you delve into this hobby, you'll be able to understand more and more of why these things have been added and the uses for them. We also have the G-code editor, which I love. You can write in custom G-code here and basically run that job based on the code that you've written. So real, once again, really nice feature, uh, just commanding the machine by code, which is nice. Those of you that like to use code over uh, generic files. Other than that, we also have uh, feed resets here. You can increase the speed while the machine's running as well as the tooling if you're using a spindle versus a router. And then of course the wizards and tools. This drop down is full of awesome things. You have ways to calibrate the machine first off, which is great. And you have a surfacing wizard here, which is really nice and convenient. So basically what happens is you have a spoiler board that's attached to your machine. The surfacing wizard's gonna allow you to level this material off based on how you trammed your router. So these are all you know, details that you'll, you'll find yourself uh, needing information about as you dive into this hobby. So the surfacing wizard is just a great place to start just to make sure that your material is nice and level before you start manufacturing sophisticated projects. So just uh, something to keep in mind there. Definitely a really cool intuitive way to use this software. Basically you, uh, you come in here for the router bit diameter, enter all this information in, and then you can proceed and run the job. So also in Wizards and Tools, we have uh, the mobile jog widget, which is really nice and convenient. You don't have to worry about, you know, always being next to your laptop. You can go ahead and set this up to your phone. So you just scan this QR code here and uh, go through the prompts and you can control your machine from your mobile device. Really cool. So on down, once again, we have the flashing tool for Gerbil. So if you ever encounter any problems with your controller, you can always reflash it to 1.1. It's uh, completely up to you there and based on the controller that you're using for your machine. So other than that, we have the tool on option here, which is really cool for spindle, laser, plasma. You also have uh, the coolant option here. Once again, this all has to be configured to your controller, but it can be controlled from the software, which is really nice. Once again, tool off here. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to turn off the spindle or laser. But it's really nice so you can calibrate, especially with like a laser or plasma. Coming back here to Gerbil settings, we had already gone over some of the advanced settings. All this stuff is uh, default for our machine bundle, which is the 1510. Once again, you can come in here and, you know, adjust these settings to your preference. But that is an uh, availability here on the software as well. Uh, coming back to the troubleshooting tab, once again... 
we have uh, firmware parameters. You have the change log here, which is very helpful for updates. You can see, you know, what's been changed in the software, which is really nice, as well as uh, communications here. You can see your installed version, uh, backend queued blocked, connection status, just really cool stuff here. So as well as that, we have uh, the Open Builds form, which you can link to, which is great. Once again, for a resource, like any type of problems that you encounter with the software, please select the forum selection here because this is where you're going to get the most help. People have been working on these machines for years and they're just very experienced in this hobby. So if you have questions, definitely go to the forum. Other than that, if we go back to the control tab, you always have the option to just go back to openbuilds.com. Definitely suggest visiting, create a profile and interact with the community. Everybody loves this hobby and just loves talking about, you know, their different experiences and things that they've done to simplify the process. It's just really a great place to interact with builders. So definitely check that out. So we pretty much gone over all the details here to the software, just kind of a brief overview. Now let's go ahead and let's run some G code on our machine. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select this section here to go straight back to the forum and we're going to go ahead and select the software tab here and let's go into open builds cam G code generator. And once again, this cam software is free. So it is just really nice to be able to create some G code, test your machine out and this is all an online platform. So what we're going to do here is start with the new workspace. We're going to run through the settings here and set it up specific to our machine type and controller. So let's go into settings. You'll see an option here on the left side for settings. Go ahead and select that. We're going to select our controller, which is the black box. We're going to go ahead and select our machine, which is the work B 1510. So once again, we're going to look for that drop down menu, select the 1510. And then of course your, uh, your, your tool selection here, it's completely up to you. We're not using any tools right now. We're just going to run uh, a dry run here with no tooling. And then of course, all these parameters are preset based on your machine profile that you've selected. So let's go ahead and save. And what you see here is the parameters that have been set up for your machine profile. So for the work B 1510, you can see this is quite large. It's 1500 by a thousand millimeters. You can zoom in here. Once again, it's kind of like that 3D viewer we were showing you on the control software. So now that we have the parameters set here, let's go into the workspace tab once again, and we're gonna open up a simple file. We just wanna check our machine, make sure that everything's functioning correctly. We can get G code to run on the machine and it's going in the right direction, all that good stuff. So let's go to open hello world example. We're gonna go in here and you have options. Once again, if you have a drag knife, plasma or laser, you would you would select these specific hello worlds. But we have a CNC, so we're gonna run this hello world. And from there, it's going to configure those tool paths for you. Now, these are uh, different ve vectors that are set up. We have a path inside as well as a CNC pocket. So we've got a little diversity here as well as uh, the path outside. So basically what you're gonna see is a path outside, which is here, your pocket, it's the inside, and then a path inside which is gonna be for the hello. So you get a little example of all three. So next, we're just gonna go ahead and transfer this G code to the OpenBuilds controller, which is once again, really convenient. It's just kind of cam and uh, control software working together. So go ahead and select transfer G code to the OpenBuilds control. And you'll see here that the 3D viewer pops up and you can see your tool pass here and how your machine's gonna run this job. Super awesome, love this 3D viewer. Once again, you can zoom in here, really get an idea of how deep and just the different vectors in general. Just really cool. So now that we have that set up, next we're just going to go ahead and establish that zero point for our machine. So any type of manufacturing, you need to make sure that you always establish a zero point. Now you can do that with a Z touch plate or an XYZ probe. We're going to do it the old school manual way here. We don't have a router installed, but this is going to act like it's running G code. So you're going to see the machine move up away from the material and then move back down as if it was delving into the material for the manufacturing process. So what I want to do is go ahead and drop my Z axis down slightly. And this is a relatively small job. It's about say one foot by one foot. So it's going to be all within this area. So I like where my X, Y, my X and Y are, but I need to move down that Z slightly. 
So coming over here to Z at one millimeter increments, I'm just gonna drop this down slightly. That looks good. And then I'm gonna go over here to set zero for X, Y, and Z. And you'll see the digital readouts, they zero out. That's exactly what you should see. Now if you were wanting to just set the zero for a specific coordinate, you could always just zero out that one next to that axis. So next I wanna show you a really cool feature when manufacturing is the check size feature. So up at the top here, before you run a job, you can always check the size to make sure that you're within the parameters of your machine. So let's go ahead and select that. So you can see we have plenty of room to work with here. And once again, we're gonna just go ahead and zero that out. And next, let's go ahead and run that job. You can see that I'm following here with my 3D viewer. This is in real time. It's really cool. So it's gonna run through and basically manufacture this whole job through an air cut. As you can see, my machine is functioning correctly. Everything looks great. You can always stop the job, pause it here if you have any issues, and then of course, recalibrate and try that job again. Okay, everything looks great. The machine is functioning perfectly. So let's just go ahead and pause that job here. You can see that it's immediate. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Go ahead and initialize that homing cycle once again. All right, so that completes the wiring and software portion of this video. And as you can see, our machine came out great. Everything's nice and neat. We have all of our settings configured to our controller. So we're ready to run some sweet projects. So make sure to stay tuned for future videos. Hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out the Open Builds forum.